to two talks this afternoon uh, from the series uh, Distinguished Lectures. And the first one is by Leo Gramsciaro from Florida International University. The title of his talk is Borel Bell Theory and the plus alien, alien, alien functions from Riemannian symmetric space. So, Gil. Thank you. The floor is yours. Ah. Okay, distinguished lecture piece. That's a little unexpected to me, but I hope it's only honor. So, thanks for the invitation. The talk here will be uh, some relation between uh, these theories, which are based on very classical representation of property groups. Uh, one, as mentioned, is Borel Well. You don't know Borel Well, but the Borel Well part of the theory. In terms of homomorphic sections of line bundles on flag manifolds. And the other part is about um, eigen spaces of the Laplace Beltroni operator on compact remaining spaces, which are again representation spaces in a sense, not necessarily reducible, but they have nice irreducible components described. And um, so far, we haven't seen direct relation. And uh, the relation is through differential geometry and mostly symplectic geometry part. So uh, I would mention that uh, the results here are joined with uh, my former student Camilo Montoya and my little brother who is called Dmitry Kuncharov who is just two inches lower, lower, kind of shorter than me, so he's still little. <laughs> now, <coughs> we start with uh, um, synthetic reduction, which is called plus and Weinstein reduction also. So we start with, with the synthetic. Manifold omega theory is in vector form. And suppose we have compact Lie group acting from N in a Hamiltonian way, meaning uh, if X is inside. Now, I'll use this notation for the real number. And this also, except element of the real number, is a vector induced in N. So that this is the interior, uh, from, uh, the interior product of the symplectic form due to the standard natural geometric Cartan identities. This is closed because this is acting resolving only. And if there is function U which is star, which means this form is actually exact for every new vector field. This function is called Hamiltonian. And this new now suppose that element here, which is fixed, let's say, by joint action G. This is the dual space to the algebra. Then this space, the pre-image, 
here of this value C, which is like a level set of the moment. It's also G invariant. And the standard assumes that action is, let's say, free, so that we don't need any uh, singularities. We heard a lot about singularities. So that the space. Well, let me make this very space. And um, the notation standard in the resolution is which is pretty much symplectic interpretation of GLT quotient when you have compact groups. And then <coughs> on this stage, the main point is there exists. Unique. Now, I will write down the reduce. And C, because it depends on C. Such that, well, uh, pull back. of this map is the same as the restriction is I need to uh, embed it. the restriction of coming up onto the level set and um, this Sometimes it's called synthetic reduction or Marzen, Weizen, and other words. Uh, now, I said that. The loop is when this reduced form actually is together. And um, I'll uh, talk about one more quantization. I will tend to abbreviate it here so that I don't want to go further. Condition. Is when we have feathers and the class would be my factor of course minus. This is what we'll be looking for. And um, at this point, I guess what 
well, uh, consider is not any better, but precisely this one. And uh, the idea is when satisfies this quantization condition. Then C should have special value. Sometimes it's called energy level of the action. So this is not every C. Usually it's some discrete values. Uh, and um, instead of giving a limitation for that, it's actually quantization condition on the number C. I'll start with the corresponding example. Classical one again. of the geodesic flow on the sphere and um, in this case actually the setup and the results are Back formally, probably to early 20th century when the hydrogen atom was actually first discovered that it has a structure, a second, the well known energy levels appear to be discrete there. So, <coughs> in this case, the synthetic space we want is the cotangent window. Of course, it has a number. And I will consider instead the cotangent bundle without the zero section. Now, the cotangent bundle uh, standard commands and describe globally as a subset, and I will use it later. For which this is all the pair, maybe I'll use this also for the standard color color for pairing. And um, omega here is. Identification actually comes very easy. 
This is why. This is so positive. Now, if we consider that function, the norm of the here x is the point on the sphere, and y corresponds to the cotangent vector. Formally, the tangent vector, but we implicitly use here the method in our picture. And uh, if that is the uh, function, then we have the corresponding kind of the vector field. And this kind of the vector field has a flow. It's called Geodesic flow because the flow lines project exactly to geodesics from C N. Now the geodesic of S N of course are closed curves. The flow lines of S H also. In particular, so this means that we have natural S1 action on the surrounding phase. Which is Hamiltonian. And uh, in fact, So, is H uh, 1 over 2y or y squared? Yes. One uh, usually uses y squared, but because we are talking about level sets in later on, y, but y squared is a canonical. But the level set for any moment is the same. Now, um, if we consider, of course, because this is S1. Every point the Lie algebra is R, or we measure the R, and of course every C in R is fixed point by the drawing action. It's a big And then if we use which is the reduced space, the result is actually The main point of door again is what would be and this one satisfies This quantum condition, quantization condition, if C actually depends on one integer, and the form of the integer looks like this. Is any positive number. So for any positive number, this CK satisfies 
condition. And by such, if C satisfies this condition, there is a J with this problem. Now, very easy. Because I want to say to what, what's here. More. Um, Now, <coughs> just again. All right, here I sent which is what was. is that the corresponding L now Q for the most likely point out of the geometric of course is a quadric in CPM which is equivalent to some of money and the car is just Z is generated by one element in this case, somehow, corresponds to the power of this current section of the CPM restricted to the quadric. But um, the idea is that the phase of sections for this bundle, this maybe I should write on carefully, is the bundle on Q. In the space of the sections can be identified again. It's a pretty simple exercise. With the um, span, maybe I should try to do that. Uh, functions like this, uh, maybe I should try to case two. Okay, and then for CPM. So uh, this is our K. And we still have that. We have A and Z are both and this is a function with Z. Roughly speaking, we consider a uh, principle here of this type of uh, all CPM. So this is n plus one minus zero. And how one takes the homomorphic section so one bundles on CPM process. Here this condition, and these are linear functions, and the condition here is to ensure that this is isomorphic to Now, this is one can consider compare this to this space, which has various descriptions, because eigenfunctions for the spheres, of course, have of harmonics, because it's one of the most classical spaces of uh, this type of harmonic analysis. One can determine as, well, I'll write down. Complexified, which means functions in fact this is of course sine negative is constant and usually it's minus lambda squared depends on how one takes the sign for the whole class and uh, this is equivalent to Functions of this type, whereas but x is in R and x1. A is complicated. In particular, this 
complex space, but three dimension. The same as the complex dimension. Homomorphic exceptions. Not just equal. Somehow, one thing about the visit, yes, harmonic, other set of harmonics out of homomorphic exceptions. The relation by the key. Now, this basic approach, I mean, this is, I would say, as two uh, rooms, there is nothing brand new, so we all involve observations, but the fact that this type of approach is something that I learned from paper by two Bulgarians, if I don't know them, and the Siltsunov. And the son of the Siltsunov is here, so I'm happy he can listen. Now, I'll make two remarks before I go to the two. The first one is, it's uh, relatively, not necessarily easy, but straightforward. It's up to technical calculations and some limits to extend. is to all I'll write down this notation and I'll just use it. These are remaining symmetric compact remaining symmetric spaces of rank one. And these are in a certain way the most um, well known since all those examples of Riemannian spaces, all of which geodesics are closed. There are others, but uh, as far as I know, it's not a open question from the other side. And um, <coughs> the second is that here Q that's only the quadric which is assigned to the sphere in fact form implies the the limited juice Pretty much the corresponding relation between rank one symmetric spaces and the um, symplectic reduction of the function bundle satisfies all of this. So, in this case, uh, one can pretty much also use similar approach to de describe the eigen spaces as explicit algebraic functions. At least in the case of complex projective spaces and polynomial projective spaces. Now, um, in general, harmonic analysis on symmetric spaces it is again very classical topic. And, uh, well, it's well described in the rules of the um, The problem in a center, well, one problem is that, in general, the description of the eigenfunctions is in terms of integral representation, something similar to the so called Teladon transform analysis. And this is not explicit. Well, uh, this approach actually at least tells you that uh, pretty much the monetic object like eigenfunctions of a plus operator, in fact, uh, real algebraic, in particular if one looks at questions which are standard demonic analysis like the zero laws of eigenfunctions. 
then this is your real compressor. Now, let me try a general picture and explain what happens if we don't want uh, rank one only. The rank one, of course, is <coughs> the most passive task. And uh, in general, the results for different crosses appear in different papers. But uh, this one here can be written in a little bit more general terms. So, by way what cross is something which I remember as a notation. I was introduced in uh, one of the first books by Arthur Bessie Seminar. Some time ago, somebody asked me, are these people really devout Christians or religious? And I was like, as far as I understand, no, they're not, they're just French. They're just so everywhere. So suppose that we have um, no, I will use X here because I will use something compact and uh, I'll ask for let's say if it is wrong. Just for simplicity. Then X. No more general theory tells you that is that it's a quotient where G is like simple. The group and K is subgroup in the group of like the formula. Sigma is the evolution of the group G. Now, this introduces a set of isometries on this space where each isometry has a fixed point, and at the fixed point, the action on the tangent space is negative. This is a standard definition, but again, the theory of this type of Spaces in this in one home, there are classifications. Uh, one interesting point is that, in fact, the theory is strictly algebra theory, but the classification first has to go to the non compact laws because they have a unique compact, maximum compact of algebra, and then use duality to write down the tables of all compact dimensional spaces. Now I'm going to use this as the standard decomposition of this sigma induces uh, automorphism of the algebra. And this is the standard decomposition of the real algebra of GMK. And in P, there is something which is called maximum abelian idea or maximum abelian algebra here. Now, it's not unique, but uh, what's important is that all such maximum abelian ideas a conjugate under the three action. In particular, if we fix maximum abelian algebra, what we can do further is um, to consider um, let me see to make sure that I'm not missing them. As 
of space to be um, in the algebra thing, such that which means a centralizer. And then uh, we can take extend A to a um, set algebra of G, maximum beginning of G. But the main of it will be the space M A, which actually is a real algebra. And once we know that G or K bytes transitively on the set of a billion maximum billions of spaces. We assign that to the group subgroup of G. Then this subgroup is actually centralizer of A torus. So we have one dimension of this, the torus is coming out of A. And then this set, this genome space, is in fact generalized for money. So we started with X and somehow assigned, which is generalized for this is generalization in this picture. In this case, the quadrant is this many, so this generalization. Now, to go to the next step, how one can use symplectic geometry to relate the more sections of one of those here to eigen spaces or symmetric space. Um, we need a little different space. And the different space is the rules and the which that is the subgroup corresponding to this Then <coughs> there is this type of map, which in fact, oh, I guess I should mention here that the dimension of A is called brown. And uh, this is in fact nice in terms of geometry, geometry, differential geometry, also, because this is principal decay control. Right, okay. And what I want is another space, slightly different. which sold in more recent papers of books of how a little moment. Is there no problem in the last bundle with some if M is finite? No, no, that is not true. M is uh, it's just an exponent the connected component. Uh, M, M definitely contains at least the part of the mass motor which is not in A. If A is we need the connected. Yeah. We need the connected so it's just a bit for it. It's just a bit. 
Because you are identity. You, you take the connected component inside. Yeah. Well, that's a big form until it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need connected component. The okay, case not equal to a connected component. This is possible, but yeah, it's okay. And then <coughs> what we want is actually this space is going to the market place there. Where this is actually C star But with the same characteristic classes. So this is kind of a C star bundle which reduces after taking a metric to Only part of that. So, in particular, this dot one to five is a form. This is a form on uh, G mod n, but this is a form on G mod l. And this is precisely. The half of the question class, or half of the our uh, square root of the canonical bundle. Important for this is that in representation theory, especially this form appears as shifting in the standard formulas, like vial formulas for characters and for dimensions. So, with these notations, I'll try to see. If I can formulate the basic theoretical result here, and then end with one example, which is not necessarily like one. So suppose we have Um, 
has these basic properties. And um, the properties here are uh, 
7 So this set is irreducible to the representation G. Irreducible, that means unitary irreducible, of course. And moreover, the alien. is not just element of phase star. Uh, the corresponding highest waves which give um, uh, or appear uh, in the representation of eigen functions on the class of the many semantic spaces, they satisfy additional conditions. Uh, easy relativity and notorial by the time that tell the some theorem. And, uh, well, this specific representation of a compact, uh, compact group which actually appear as subspaces of the design spaces of the class, they're called spherical representations. So we need alpha here of these spaces to correspond to actually spherical representations. There are some more things here to say, but I guess I have five minutes, so. I probably can briefly mention this one example of not rank class in this space. And uh, how one can guess out of these sections, because usually one can find easily algebraic representations of explicit polynomials which are presented in of the sections. But, uh, the corresponding nice representations for like spectral harmonics on general remaining spaces are missing. So let me move to this space. Maybe since um, we heard yesterday a couple of thoughts about general flat manifolds. Uh, just to mention that uh, there is direct relation between the diagram, the thinking painting, of like white thinking diagram of this, 
and the so-called Sataka diagram of the non-compact dual of the symmetric space. Because Sataka diagram also has uh, black and white vertices of the symmetric diagram, and has additional arrows. So basically, the flat manifolds which appear out of Sataka are the Sataka diagrams with the arrows erased. And then, in this way, you can pretty much generate all. I mean, not every flat manifold appears. So here, uh, let me write down the last data here quickly. The corresponding, this is x, the corresponding is actually the basic flag space of standard 1 to 5 in 3 in C3. Then um, one can write down this type of numbers. Of course, this has the uh, card z squared. And then the dead alpha and alpha 2 are the simple of SL3 C, alpha 3 is the sum. Then these numbers in fact move like this. And this there is a constant here, which, well, depends on the uh, scaling of the, the time uh, came form, which depends on the representation. Um, could be one, could be one half. And the circle representation, however, all for which K1, K2 are given. Meaning, in this case, this actually come out of or can be represented the subspaces of the Laplace eigenspace. So, in this case, I will finish with the corresponding functions which appear. Now, if we look at Here, PQ are uh, the numbers which appear for the degenerate. So, but, uh, well, it's easy because this is. Two generators come out of there. It's a product condition there. So, this can be described as a set of, uh, well, I'll try that one. A, Z, P times B or Q, and this is fun. With uh, eight, oh, not this is on again, with the and omega are in sixteen. A and B blue, and we have Corresponding eigenfunctions if Z this time is in look like this. But 
point is, this is only as much as one can guess after figuring out how some possible value functions look. Well, the, the result here tells that pretty much every value function in this space is a combination of this type. In particular, this is a lot of value function. Do you have some questions or remarks? Yeah. Uh, it's possible to have some similar approach to understand the Laplace of the black drive. example of such in the case of maximum rank. And maximum rank means that the corresponding associated flight particle is actually the standard of general the standard flight. And for the standard flight, of course, all representations are derived, but not all the representation of the spherical in terms. At least uh, one needs to have something which is called like uh, even condition. The responding coefficients are even. And and this is not only here, it's for everything. Yeah, yeah, but is it always even and can it be some other factor? In general, for presentations. Do you have some control over this factor? Is this a specific question? Uh, no. In general, if we start with max rank, this should be the only. All of this should appear as some spaces. We have a lot of some spaces in the right spaces that we have. But for the other flags, of course, one has restriction. It's not the it is generalized flag. Some are missing the representations because some come into this part of the reading algebra, which is like that. The representations are Okay. Some other questions? Or? If not, let's take the question. You're okay. Let me remind you that the next lecture starts at 3.15. Okay. okay. <laughs> this means... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, the next lecture is by uh, Ernesto Lupesu from Research Institute in Mexico City. And the title of his talk is Remarks on Coach Polynomials for Certain Non Algebraic Complex Manuals. So, please. Thank you so much. So, we're uh, at this nice Coach Theory Conference. I'm very honored to be here back in Sofia. Very happy. And so, I have to speak. Uh, so this is not quite 
Hodge theory, but it's close enough. So uh, this is going to be a more of a, a divertimento than something as heavy as real Hodge theory and whatnot. Uh, I'm just going to make some uh, entertaining remarks about uh, non-algebraic uh, methods. Okay, uh, so uh, the way then I have decided to start this talk is to first write down very explicitly uh, many, many examples, a large family of examples of complex manifolds that are non-algebraic, so that we will have some something to work with. Because we're not so used, to, well, a lot of us originally are not so used to them. We're very used to algebraic varieties and so on. But these non-algebraic examples are less uh, familiar sometimes. So I'm going to write them very explicitly. First, a few examples of non-algebraic complex manifolds. And then I'm going to look at the Hodge numbers. And then we're going to see something happening. And this will inspire uh, the main theorem of, the, of this story. So this story, and we start with examples. So of course, the first example is a better known. And this is the, the, the whole point is that they have to be known as the right, remember? That's the whole point. Uh, so I'm going to start by uh, the Hopf manifold. And we know what this is. This is the better known. Topologically it's just a product of two spheres, a naught, spheres, and a one. And this is well Cn minus zero mod Z. And <coughs> these appear in 1948, of 1948. Uh, if you write this paper uh, entitled about the topology of some complex methods, that's attached <laughs> about the topology of some complex methods. And, and then this complex method will go up here. Typically, though, That acts on Zn uh, just by Q and the identity and 1 less than Q, 0 less than Q less than 1. Just by multiplication by Q, Q. And the identity matrix n by n. So uh, when you have these contractions, Q is less than 1, and you take the quotient, and then you end up with this. Uh, because you take this, this sphere here, and then the other direction becomes the S1. So that's what you get. This is clearly a complex manifold. And uh, for example, in the case n equals even more particular, n equals 1, n equals 2, sorry. n equals 1 just gives you an electric curve, of course. Uh, so it's, uh, nevertheless, a very important example for us, an electric curve. But uh, n equals 2 starts to get a little bit. And that's, of course, algebraic. But n equals 2 is the first example that we have of a non-algebraic manifold, non kähler I'm, I'm going to call it H2. And things of the kind of mass even in this very simple example, S3, this is S2. And S3, 2, S2 has the famous Hopf vibration. Uh, so S3, 2, S2 gives you an S1 fiber, but of course it's the Hopf vibration. This is the generator of pi 3 of S2. And uh, this happens to be a complex manifold. And this happens to be an electric curve, the fiber and this is a so-called elliptic vibration. Mm. 
But of course, it, this is not like holomorphic to be one cross E. It's not like holomorphic to be one cross E. It's something else. Uh, and of course, this is algebraic. And it's very easy to see that this is not the case because it's topology. H2 of H2 is nothing. So it doesn't have a, a space for a Kähler form or for a symplectic form. It doesn't have room for a symplectic form. So that's the first example. It's very famous. And we and think of this one. If I start to go a little bit faster. So then we have the Calabi Ekman. Manifolds. The Calabi Ekman manifolds were are uh, generalizations of this story a little bit. Now it's the crux of two spheres, uh, not as one, but another odd sphere. And uh, uh, this one, PKL, fibers over PK minus one, PL minus one. Uh, so it's a similar situation to that one. You could think that uh, they are from Calabi and Ekman, 1953. Uh, a class of compact complex manifolds which are not algebraic. Now the emphasis, the historical emphasis, now is in the non-algebraicity of these manifolds. And let me write down, how to have the blackboard, but the eraser, I'm not forget where I did it. Let me just very quickly say that I take Cn minus 0 cross Cn minus 0 and M here 1. Then I take D from C and I act by D acting on XY here. E to the Tx. What am I writing this? E to the ADY. Well, because this is going to be very important later on at some point. Then I'm just using the exponential function and nothing else. I'm using the exponential function to define these manifolds and nothing else. No, no, no more complicated functions than that. This is a very special situation that has been very relevant in some trends in mathematics recently. Yeah. The D to the D is some point sometimes D? Yeah, I think alpha in C minus R. Fix alpha in C minus R. And then what is the quotient of this of this by this action? That's M. Or E, sorry, E. Okay. And the fiber is an elliptic curve. And is this elliptic curve? Is that elliptic curve? The fiber. Is that elliptic curve? So it's a it's very explicit. The whole thing is very explicit. Now, but we can do a little bit better than this, uh, and we can further analyze this situation in such a way that now we are going to have a, a, a family of examples almost as general, and then I will go a little bit more general, but not much more, where n is this thing, and here will, there will you have a toric variety, and then here you have Sometimes an elliptic curve, but sometimes a complex torus of higher dimension. The dimension could go up. So uh, they generalize both the Hopp manifolds and the Calabi Ekman manifolds. And these manifolds are the so called LBM methods for Lopez telegram, uh, the Hopsky. And Merzman, and they appear in uh, in a seminar in Mexico City in 1986. Six about anyway, LBM. And this is Lopez de Medrano, Rakowski, with a generalization by Merzman. And generalizes that, that story, as I just explained. 
Uh, so now we have uh, these compact compressors. We have the, the LDM manifold. The LDM manifold is a complex manifold. Again, the whole point is that it's non kähler and non algebraic. And then here you have a toric manifold, typically, or before, and a little bit more than we will see. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm going to help myself, but here, most often than not, what you have is a non commutative space called a quantum toric variety. Uh, but in some, it includes the case where they are ordinary toric varieties. Okay, so how am I going to define these LBM manifolds? Well, as a portion of something often by an action of something, just in, uh, in analogy to the situation. But the input data is it's an interesting thing. The input data, what is the input data? To find a LBM manifold. The input data is a bunch of complex numbers, well, complex vectors, a bunch of complex numbers. That's the input data. That's it. That's what you get in, and what you get out is this. But it has to have some condition to really allow you to get this out. So, what are the conditions of these numbers? One, they come, they, all this terminology comes from the field of dynamical systems. Uh, one is the second condition. And this just says that she must belong to the complex hull of all these vectors in CM. If you take all these vectors in CM, you make the, just the real complex hull. Uh, you have a real complex hall, and you make sure that the origin is there, then not set. You have a single condition. Okay. Uh, and then the weak hyperbolicity condition. The weak hyperbolicity condition is similar. It, what it says is that, weak hyperbolicity says that, I want zero to belong to the complex, real complex hall of lambda i, where lambda i is where the subset here, I get a subset of indices. And then I get the subset of lambdas, then I get the complex hall for a subset of indices. Uh, if zero belongs, then the cardinality of the subset of indices is less than 2, m plus 1. And here I should have said this extreme. I'm going to have to remember this throughout the talk. A is bigger than 12. Remember that. I get two numbers with this data, two integer numbers. N and N. And N has to be bigger than 12. So when you say dynamical systems, are we to think of this like construction as being like taking the orbits of some dynamical system? I'm, just, I'm go about to produce mm -hmm. the dynamics. Oh, okay. uh, it's very similar to toric varieties, very, very similar to toric varieties. Except that in toric varieties, all the dynamics is about periodic orbits, it's about yes. torque. And now here, the orbits, while the orbits remain complex abelian groups, uh, they not, not, are not necessarily compact. So, uh, yeah. but we'll see. Uh, so, that's the weak hyperbolicity condition. So these two conditions will allow, allow me to produce uh, an open set and some dynamical system there whose quotient is n. The quotient is n. So, uh, so let, let me tell you what it is. Do you have a description of 
Sorry? So you have a busy description of M topologically, like in the case of whole surfaces? Or it's as com it's arbitrarily complicated topologically, as we will see. It, you can get as arbitrarily complicated topologies as you may desire. It's, go it's going to be very complicated. The topology of N. Probably a bit. Uh, of course, you will recover this cross of the sphere that we were talking about, and then you will get arbitrarily complicated topologies. Uh, so, anyway, N associated to lambda is the prioritization of an open set, model CM. And again, now it's not a torus, it's CM, that's the point. It's not a torus, it's CM. Uh, where S is inside CM, and this is only combinatorial in fact. This is combinatorial in fact, this A, clearly S, is combinatorial in fact. Like in total varieties, and then the action. And then the action. In fact, S is a total variety, and P of S is a total variety. This is not very relevant, but they are. And, and then you get these complicated action better. Uh, so it's just an open set, and then you have this dynamical system. So the dynamics, uh, so, I, so the conditions, the dynamic conditions, give you what are the semi-stable locus, or whatever you want to call it, but I don't need to use words because I can write it down. So I don't need to use words because I write down S. That's S. That's precisely S. Because I'm going to define only on the indices uh, of, you know, on so that zero is in the complex hall of lambda i z. So depending on this. Various convex holes. You should think of this example. And then you can put the point here, and then you have various convex holes, or here, and then you get all these various convex holes, and then you see this from the third. Okay, so it's that kind of combinatorial game that we know how to play. And the action is, again, this action. Uh, is linear when written in logarithmic coordinates. I so t acting on z is c i x of lambda i t projected coordinates, of course. So, very simple differential equation. Yeah. So you just repeat once the condition of all this. So c from c to the end and all this, uh, all this region there. Yes. What's the definition of s? Yes, yes. So can you repeat that, please? s is the points in cn. Yes. So that 0 is in the common solve of lambda i z. Ah, and what is i z? i z is the set of i's. So that set i is not zero. Let's talk uh, Anyway, uh, you have this. But look, they actually a very simple differential equation. It's as, as simple as it gets. Uh, and then, what do you get out of this definition? The definition is exceedingly simple. Now, because you already get some mileage out of this. If n is 2m plus 1, n lambda is a complex, compact complex torus. Just like we were getting this wheel of manifold that was an elliptic curve, and that shouldn't be there, you know. This is the other one of the elliptic curve. Ah, I'm not the way. Compact complex manifold. Torus. And then, as soon as A gets bigger, 2 plus 2 onwards, we get the non cater la 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 la, non-cater, compact complex manifold. 
yeah, becomes an okay with the computer. And this, that's the LVM manifold given by the lambda satisfying the dynamical conditions. Ex the definition is completely explicit. The definition is completely explicit. Uh, I'm not doing okay. Okay, so I'm going to generalize this a little bit more. Just a little bit more, just bear with me. I know it's starting to get a little bit too, too many letters, you know. But, so what we have, what we have is really, I trans, we translate it to the very explicit language what you would get from a differential equation given by these numbers. From a, 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 reason, a reason system of differential equations given by those numbers, we just wrote down explicitly the solutions. And so we, we flow, this looks like this, this S looks like this, and then we flow. And we have this dynamical system, and we just take the quotient by the action, and that's what M is, is the space of trajectories of the dynamical system. Uh, CM, CM trajectories of the dynamical system. Okay, so that's what it is. It's very simple. But it generalizes both Calabi Ekman and Hoff. And there is a, a whole bunch of uh, compact complex non killer metaphors, a lot of them. Now we have a lot of them. I want a little bit more. Yeah. It's easy to see that they are non killer or it's more complicated? Yeah. No second cohomology. No second cohomology around. Nowhere around. So, there it is. Uh, so the definition is entirely explicit, more explicit. Uh, you can you can do a little bit better than this. Uh, and now they are called L B L B metals. The uh, B now is Bosium, and this is a few years later, not too many years later. And what he does is that rather than taking the God given dynamical conditions to define S, he asks Given this action, how many S's could I combinatorially define? And would I would still get a manifold. So for how many S, how, how could I get all the S's that give me a free action, proper, free proper action? Uh, and you can do it, you know, you can do it combinatorially. Uh, uh, so what you do is you, you get this set of, set of sets of indices uh, and you ask that it has two m plus one members and then you define as e to the z z to the m And now you ask, what is the condition, the combinatorial conditions that E has to hold for this SE to still give me a good method? And he found the conditions. He found the conditions that are purely combinatorial, so that I still get a good method. But of course, now the manifold not only depends on lambda, lambda are still numbers, but now it depends on lambda and on Family. Now this family is totally not given by the Siegel and the quick hyperbolistic conditions. If I don't say anything, it was given by the lambdas. But I can get more families that I still make this into a manifold for those lambdas. And the purely combinatorial conditions are key. Uh, in fact, uh, implies that the generated by lambda i, i in e, they are fine. Generator, the generator is CM, is everything, the fine half, I don't know what call it, the fine half, yeah. Then beta condition is that E and E two of them, two of elements is D. Then the whole of lambda E, interior intersection, the whole, 
This is not giving us too much. You know? It's not the answer. And then some other conditions that I'm too lazy to write. That you can take a point and add a point and still be me. Anyway, there are some conditions that make this a little bit more general. And you still get, now you get a lot non tailored compact, complex manifolds. For every E, satisfy those conditions, for every lambda number that you give me, you get one. Now, in the more general case, though, this is so general that it doesn't lie on top of a toric manifold. If, uh, now it really lands necessarily on top of a non commutative quantum toric space in the Bosio case, LVMB case. Uh, but I'll say a little bit more later about this story. Now, LVM is the category of LVM metaphors is inside the category. And this is Calabi Eggman, and this more or less is Hawk. And you have generalization on top of generalization on top of generalization. You have now a lot of complex com and a, a, there is a, 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 a few interesting things that I don't know if I should say because I'm saying too much. But somehow the thing is that if you have this N, you have this toric thing that may be a toric variety but could be a quantum toric variety and you have here, whatever you have here, then <coughs> maybe you have here the, the fan for this, and here you have the configuration of lambdas, and they should be related somehow, this looks like a combinatorial object, and this a geometric combinatorial object, and they are, they are uh, related, it, it is the same to have the fan has to have this num uh, these numbers, but in a dual world. In fact, this is going to be more realized by the gate fan. I will explain this a little bit better. But you can recover the fan. Uh, uh, and, but you see, I never asked any rationality condition of the lambdas. And because I didn't ask any rationality condition of the lambdas, X is really a non-commutative space, naturally, a stack. But that highly non-separative stack uh, is not a direct stack. It's a quantum toric variety. Uh, but anyway, it has a fan, the fan may be irrational. Uh, but it's a, it's a little more than a fan. It's a, a fan with some large points. Uh, so it's a little, a little generalization, you can see it in our paper on quantum toric geometry, that we call uh, uh, a calibrated quantum fan. It's a little bit more than a fan. Of course, ordinary fans you get, uh, ordinary fans in, uh, in some circumstances. And you may want to stay just with ordinary fans and just those cases. But if you really want to know the whole package, you have to mark some points and you have to allow fans that are non-rational and then you really get the correspondence. So you have these fans with marked points. Very general situation. Uh, how are these manifolds like toric manifolds? Let me explain how they are like toric manifolds, apart from being that, that they are inside a quantum toric space. Apart from that fact, you can say it in a different way. Uh, what you can say is that, oh, oh, yeah. N lambda is G lambda. If we write a compactification, of a complex abelian Lie. So you have an, uh, an abelian, a complex abelian Lie, uh, abelian, abelian Lie group. So there is an equivalent, uh, holomorphic equivalent compactification. So this is, has a uh, a little bit of the flavor of toric geometry. Uh, but of course now we do very more often than not is non-compact. Uh, so you have uh, uh, 
I mean, uh, not only it's not compact, I, I mean it's not a torus. To cut big portions of C ends there. C would have some big, a fine piece or whatever. Uh, okay. And nevertheless, uh, if I restrict my attention to the LBM case, I probably should do that. I should just take the LBM case to avoid confusing you. So what is it, uh, my, if I receive my attention to the LBM case, then these things have not only a fan, but they have an easy to write moment polytope. So I'm, let, I'm going to write the moment polytope of these methods. So let me write it. So, uh, so, of course, now you don't have a synthetic form, but you kind of do in the non commutative realm. But I'm not going to say that. I'm going to remain explicit. The moment polytope, uh, well, I, can, I, I really can write it very quickly. Uh, I'm going to embed as a C infinity manifold. This everything is not going to be a holomorphic algebraic, nothing map. It's going to be a C infinity map uh, of the LBM manifold into CPM minus 1. Uh, and it's going to be, the impact is going to be realized as the intersection of real quantities. So, uh, in the forms in PM minus 1, such that they have these equations. Again, it's surprisingly explicit. These are the So it's just an intersection of real quadrics. Uh, the real part, the imaginary part, and all the components. Just all those quadrics, that's it. You intersect all those quadrics, and you get a diffeomorphic manifold inside CPM minus 1. Now, if you, if you pull back the complex structure, it's not the complex structure of N lab. It is not the complex structure of N lab. That is not a right. It is not a projective algebraic, obviously. Uh, so, the geometric meaning of this story is that if I take the dynamical system, and at every orbit, I take the closest point to the orbit, this is what I get. It's like Lagrange multipliers. Uh, so I get these, these manifolds. And, uh, well, but clearly here, I have this action. So I have an action of S1 to the N minus 1, acting here, in the image, in the same infinity manifold. So I have this C infinity action on the C infinity manifold, and I can make the quotient, just uh, topological quotient. But of course, it's going to be stratified and it's a polytope. So, I get a polytope out of the quotient. And this is the moment, almost the moment polytope of this thing. Uh, but again, the nice thing about this polytope is that I can write the equations of this polytope. I can write the equations. I can write the equations. Is that polytope? That one. So given the lambdas, I can write the equations. And of course, this is the common point of all the Tory variety that lives below, except that I have to project it a little bit to make it really the moment polytope. So what I do is the following. This is there is a small knob on the down on the right of the wall. The wall. Yeah. That. Thank you so much. Okay, so. That polytope, I can 
projected and rediscovered the gate transform in the process. So, So when I try to do this, well, I, what I do is I find n vectors that satisfy this, that solve this system of equations, a basis for this system of equations, and then I write the polytope. Again, the lambdas entirely give me the equation of the moment polytope project. Everything is absolutely explicit. Uh, if this polytope is rational, this is the moment polytope of the toric variety lying below. If this polytope is not rational, then what you have below this manifold is a quantum, is a quantum integral system. Uh, it's a quantum integral system, literally a quantum integral system that can realize with operators in Hilbert space, etc., etc. It's a quantum toric variety. Okay. Now, uh, about the topology, let me talk about the theorem that talks about the topology of this manifold. Can I just ask you, so what is the fiber? What is the fiber? Yes, because you were saying it's a complex torus, so is it still a complex torus if it's over this quantum toric? It's a quantum torus. It's a quantum torus. Okay. It is a quantum torus. Okay. Uh, but take the rational case, if you don't feel comfortable with that, and then no worries. In the rational case, you are living on top of a toric variety, one toric variety, and uh, Okay. Ah, the topology of this manifold. The topology of this manifold is complicated. So, first, a structural theorem that says this is a theorem of post York Mensman And what it says is that uh, G any finitely presented abelian group. And if I have presented abelian group, it's inside any finite group. <laughs> so the topology get, can get arbitrarily complicated. But let me do it. Huh? Is it for any I any or just no, 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 so no. I don't know. Uh, but it's algorithmic. There is a, a, a computer algorithm. Uh, unfortunately, as all polytopic things in the world, this algorithm does a wrong in polynomial time. So we'll never know. Uh, but it's there. This can get arbitrarily complicated. Yeah. Can you make Kegel or everything that you get is non kegel well, except when you get a torus, uh, which is scalar, uh, uh, then it's not scalar. <laughs> it's never scalar. Yeah. If I omit the case, I mean, well, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. So, the are compact, complex manifolds that are non scalar, and a lot of them. And now I'm going to ask the obvious question what about the Hodge numbers. But for, first. So, what is the first example which is not this? Which is what? Which is not of this type, because you say it's very general. So, is there other, any, any other non non dealer obvious? There are. There are. Many, many others. There, are. there are families, and then there is a. Thurst and Kodaira and, and keep already thought about the same. Huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, no. This is the analog. 
to the third world in the non kd universe. This is the other one called the third world. Of course, there's more. But it's a good place to start. Well, uh, so example. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that they are more or less combinatorially defined by this fan, mark fan. You have this mark fan that is equivalent to having these numbers, then you have this space. So, uh, well, I didn't say it, but there's a theory that says that the category of LPMD manifolds with equivalent maps with this G that is inside, you know, like toric, like LD, MD maps, the category of LPMD maps is equivalent to uh, all, all, it's equivalent to the category of quantum toric variants. So it's uh, a large category. It's uh, but quantum toric variants still is a kind of a toric world. But now you have all this quantum tori, a lot of quantum tori, rather than just the tori. And yeah, now you have all this quantum tori. Anyway, nevertheless, here there is an example. complex structures. This topological space acquires these mysterious complex structures. Uh, now, in this other case, what you get is S3 cross S3 cross S1. Uh, it's a product of spheres, and again, it acquires some mysterious complex structures. S3 times S4? Or? S3 times S4. But it's the same dimension, how do you get uh, Well, the times S1 maybe or something? Uh, let me think about it. S3 times. Same is for S3 times S3 times S1. I made I made a mistake in my computation, yeah. obviously. You know? I don't but know what it's one. But it's a connected yeah. sum of cross yeah. of spheres. And I, my counting is wrong, obviously. Thank you. Uh, uh, but anyway, you can you typically get this kind of thing, products of spheres or connected sums of but then it gets very complicated when the connected sums can start to appear, and then it gets very, very complicated, the, the whole thing. So it's a lot of topological spaces that have these complex structures that are compact, compact complex manifolds that are non kb uh, So that's that. How much time do I have in my first talk? 15 more minutes. Very. And on schedule. You have so much to say. Uh, so, now you know these things are there, and let me say that uh, several general remarks, but now you want to play with what these manifolds are like and how they behave and whatnot. Uh, so, one, topological properties of LBMD manifolds. like singular homology, the rank of homology, are combinatorial. So just from the general combinatorics of the situation, much like in toric varieties, much like in toric varieties, yeah. just from the combinatorial geometry of the fan, you get the topological number, the Betty numbers are very easy to get. Here the same, they are combinatorial in nature. It's more complicated, the formulas are much more complicated, but they have the same flavor as in Tony George. So they are combinatorial. Uh, 
in P, on the combinatorics of P. Yeah. Nevertheless, the complex geometry of N depends heavily on the number theory, the arithmetics of these numbers, all these numbers. So the arithmetics of these numbers are controlling these complex structures. Uh, so talking about the, these complex structures is secretly talking about the arithmetics of these numbers and conversely talking about the arithmetics, especially yeah, a lot of properties of the, on the continuous fraction expansions of these numbers uh, reflect on statements, uh, elegant statements about the complex structures appearing on these complex methods. So, it's about the arithmetics. For example, and now, lambda being rational, I hear I'm being a little bit careless about what I mean by being rational uh, with respect to what, etc. But lambda being rational, essentially, uh, imply that N is a holomorphic torus vibration over a complete toric parameter. And then there is a rational fan that is kind of dual to the point that I wrote down. Uh, so uh, uh, it is what I was saying. You know? uh, it's what generalizes both the Calabi-Eggman and the Hobb situation. Now we're going to introduce, all this is well-known material, and now I'm going to introduce a new operation that we have introduced uh, uh, so, I'm going to do this new operation. So this operation is inspired by suspension in homotopy theory. Uh, typically, in homotopy theory, there is this homotopical phenomena that is very uh, complicated, unstable. But then, but, but when you take a bunch of suspensions, then the topological phenomena stabilizes, you enter the stable range, and then there is more regularity to the behavior. This is very typical in homotopy theory. Uh, in complex geometry, this has not been as typical, but uh, this makes us conjecture that this operation may be more general than only for LBM manifolds. Uh, we can write it down for LBM manifolds, this operation of the stabilization. That is like like in topology, you have a topological space in bar S2, where then you take a bunch of, a lot of suspensions, and, and now the homotopy groups are the stable homotopy groups of the sphere, not, not the unstable homotopy groups of S2. Likewise, these compact complex manifolds, we, we like stabilizing them so that the behavior becomes regular. When we don't stabilize them, they and topologically, what this means for an LBM manifold, topologically, what it means for an LBM manifold, topologically, is multiplying it by a bunch of elliptic curves. Uh, but it's a very subtle operation because I don't mean this, I mean topologically, this, but it's a completely different complex manifold. So the stabilization, the stabilization, n times of n is not, is topologically is multiplied by n elliptic curves, but is not by holomorphic to the multiplication of the manifold with n elliptic curves. We believe this operation generalizes to complex, um, a large family, and I will say which family, but I haven't introduced this part of complex manifolds, this stabilization procedure, but we can do it for LBM manifolds. In that case, we know what it is. So it's uh, uh, so as starting with an arbitrary p. And when I mean when I say p in this sense, I mean the combinatorics of p. 
no? a geometric point for a combinatorial point. So you give me the combinatorial of a point as an input data. Then, uh, uh, it defines S equals Cn minus T. E is this kind of collection of hyperplanes that the combinatorial of P defines. Because these indices, what, what are bases, what are not. So we get this open set that we want to divide by that. Group action of a big complex, complex abelian B group. It also defines the minimal values, minimal values of Fm that are compatible with that P. That are compatible with that P. Uh, and, finally, and finally, a family of ends above a family of lambdas. So if you give me the combinatorics of certain lambdas that are, will, be, will give you that combinatorics, and there is certain n and n's given by these lambdas that will give you that combinatorics. Uh, if you fix the combinatorics, that, that's all what I'm trying to say. I don't know how I say it. Uh, so I fix the combinatorics P and then I get a bunch of N's because I get a bunch of lambdas and a bunch of N and M's. But N and M uh, may vary and still have the same combinatorics. That, this is the observation that will give us the stabilization procedure. So in, in this world, we may and to make this comparable, I should say K here, although I'm going to regret it later, we may increase M by K and N by 2K, keeping the same P. I can do that exercise, think about it. You can increase n by k and n by 2k, k anything. <coughs> and then, and but I don't get the, get the solution. Uh, we used to have, actually, this was n. And now we will have And this will be the K stabilization of M. This will be the K stabilization of M. And because the way this action is written by these exponentials that we wrote down explicitly, this is not the product with elliptic curves. It's topologically the product with elliptic curves. But it's an entirely new complex manifold that has a new complex structure given by stabilization. Then it's a product. <laughs> then it's just with elliptic curves. It's a product with elliptic curves. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's <laughs> uh, so it's not diphonomorphic. Uh, for the hop surface, well, what, what do we get if we get the hop surface? We get a whole bunch of, we have the hop surface. So I have the hop surface. I get new complex manifolds, the hop surface, I'm going to call it H1. But then if I stabilize H1, I will get H2. And this is a new complex manifold that is diffeomorphic, H cross E. But it is not called by holomorphic, it's a new complex manifold. It's just C infinity, diffeomorphic to H cross E. And so on. And this family of manifolds, H1, H2, H3, H0, remember, was an elliptic curve. Uh, was an elliptic curve? No, no, no. H1, H2, H3, no, this is a family H1, H2, H3, sorry. Just the stabilization of these manifolds is a bunch of complex manifolds. 
They, it's very interesting. This one doesn't have a projection to this one. It doesn't have a map. It's, it's just a new manifold. It came out of nowhere, you know, I mean, it's there. You have all these complex manifolds. And I will call them the quasi top manifolds. That's how we call them. Out of lack of imagination. But I call you like that. We will, I will call it the family of quasi hop manifolds. I can do that with a, a basic LVM manifold. I can stabilize it, and then I can have these towers of manifolds. So I do it for Canary Eggman, why not? So, uh, but of course, E, I'm overusing E. So I'm going to use C for Canary Eggman. KL, but I'm over using K. There's no hope. Uh, so, uh, and then I stabilize you, but now I use K, uh, R, and, and, and so I get CKLR, the quasi Calabrian. And again, this is just topologically, it's a Calabrian manifold. Infinity, cross a bunch of elliptic curves. Cross a, a bunch of elliptic curves. But this is topological. This is not biholomorphic. It's a whole bunch of new manifolds. Uh, crosses one, crosses one, crosses one. Even numbers of S1. You have a lot of these new manifolds that we call the quasi Calabi Ekman manifolds. Uh, okay. So, now. Fine, I'm sorry about all the two, but now I have a lot of examples in my hands. I have the quasi hop manifolds, I have the quasi calabrian manifolds, I have the LBM manifolds, and the LBMB manifolds. I have a lot of manifolds. I'm going to ask a question. What about the Hodge numbers? Uh, can I say something about the Hodge numbers? Of, uh, and uh, this question has been open for a long time, and now in, in this world we, we do, we have kind of the first <laughs> progress in a, in, a, in, a, in a little while. Now we know these numbers for a four, quasi Calabi Ekman, for quasi Cobb, and for infinitely more LBM members. Not all of them, but we think we can get all, at all of them. Uh, but today we have a lot of them, not all of them. So let me tell you what it is. I want to... How much time do I have? Sorry? Two minutes. Two minutes? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you the answer uh, in four minutes, I'm sorry. Okay. Can, we can take it from my next... We'll take it from the second part. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I want, I want to have uh, the Hodge number, uh, the Hodge numbers. I, I want to try to do this would be to use the Borel spectral sequence. Uh, but this kind of fails because, uh, well, I shouldn't say it fails. Uh, certainly Panov and Ostinovsky uh, have had progress in that direction, but not a completely explicit answer this way. Uh, so, uh, although it's very tempting to try to use the model spectral sequence with the vibration of rhetoric manifold, uh, this is not what we will do. Uh, we will do something else. But yeah, let's just have a break. And then I'll tell you the answer. And maybe you can think of the answer before the next time. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Yeah, yeah. Yes. What if you take as the phase of historic regression something which is not necessarily called by problem? For example, if you take proper elliptic surface from the dimension 2, which is fiber with elliptic curves over a uh, surface which is more than one, mm -hmm. not zero, this is still not clear as that. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, can you say something like you can attach non commutative information to the surface? We believe we can. Yes. We believe we can, and Ludmil has thought more deeply about this issue uh, than all of us. Yeah, we have thought a little bit of that possibility, uh, but we haven't really embarked upon that direction. It is a, a very natural direction to consider. 
but we have not yet gotten there. You'll see what we, how far we have gotten in the next talk. Okay. Other questions? Same question. Last question. Oh, <laughs> uh, when you construct the new complex structures from this direct problem, are they different from like, the deformation process of the product one or the normal one? Completely different deformation. I mean, the numbers, characteristics are different numbers or something. You'll see about the numbers, but they are in a different deformation class. They are in, in a different deformation class. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much again. And, uh, next part of that is the uh, Let's start with the second part of this uh, story about Hodge polynomials or non algebraic complex manifolds. Uh, so let's see about what, uh, what's, uh, what happens with. Uh, explicit computations, so polygons. So what's our first big formula? Well, our first big formula is a fantastic formula. I love it. <laughs> that is, in the stable range, uh, uh, again, uh, a reasonable strategy that has been followed by other authors trying to compute the Hodge numbers of these manifolds in particular Panov and Ustinovsky, is to use the Borel spectral sequence. But this gives you some formula, and, the, and then the differential is very hard, so it's not very explicit. And I want the numbers in my hands. So uh, I want to write down the numbers. So, uh, so we do uh, something different. Uh, so uh, this table range. Uh, it is very interesting that uh, the, the elbow in R, uh, we already saw the pentagon. Uh, and so we could have the, the square and the pentagon and the hexagon. So you could have the lambdas making some elbow in R2. This Eldon, uh, so you get a uh, 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 LBM manifold in L uh, in dimension two, of course. Uh, uh, but then, if I stabilize, you see, for example, Calabian is not stable. So the formula we write is false, or not very false. And, and I can explain how to correct the the story. I, I, almost at the end of the talk, I, I can't explain how to go the story. But at first order, at, at first approximation, the form I'm going to write is just false for the color hit my middle. But it's true, as soon as I stabilize one and more, it becomes two. Uh, it is literally true for the half and for all its stabilizations. So the half is already stable. But the color hit is not stable, but if I stabilize it once and more, Become stable and then the formula holds in the stable range. And there is a way to get the unstable formula from the stable formula that I can explain if I have time. Uh, so don't worry about the fact that I'm missing exactly a calorie and I can recover it from the stable calculation. So I want to step on the the stable calculation. Uh, so what is it? What's so special about the stable calculation? That then the LBM is really and then the LBM manifold is really a discrete quotient. It's no longer a continuous quotient. In the stable range, automatically it becomes a discrete quotient. So now it's easier to do a lot of things. So uh, in particular, for the L bond that includes the stable LBM, the dots, and many more. I'm asking here that, well, um, this is what I mean by the state. 
and Galapian minus m equals uh, is m equals m minus one. Uh, so I mean a little bit more than that. Uh, uh, so I mean v equal to equal to l minus two. Stable, and so this is the w that I'm dividing by z m to get the Calabi-Elbian uh, In particular, the stabilizations of the calabi -Elman. So that would be the calabi elbian cross a little bit curved topologically and onwards with this, with, with some convex kind of structure given by this action. So okay. what does it mean to be stable? Huh? What does it mean to be stable? That n is bigger than equal to L minus 2. Oh, okay. That's my definition of stable. And now we have this theorem. Uh, so let me write the theorem. This is a uh, theorem. It deserves more space, but I'll try. <laughs> HPQ of NLM equals. It has three summons. <laughs> it's not going to be here by right? any stretch of the imagination, you know. So, should I destroy that? No, I won't destroy that. NQ. L minus 2p plus SL MQ minus 1 M minus 2 P minus 2 plus MQ minus 2 L minus 2 P minus L where SL is the number of these things pairs of non-adjacent edges. In B. Uh, the number of pairs of these things, non-adjacent edges, could be this one and this one, or this one and this one, or this one and this one. That's still already and you can't the number of pairs of numbers, that is L, and this is the beautiful, <laughs> remarkable formula for the Hodge numbers. So, this formula is extremely surprising for many reasons, as you will see. Uh, but wait, uh, just a second. So maybe I'm getting ahead of you, but does this have like any sort of, I mean, does, do these numbers like count something? Do they have any combinatorial? Because like, I mean, there's a whole sort of thing, I mean, besides the Hodge numbers, because there's like this whole sort of thing now with like Hodge numbers and combinatorics and this kind of thing. That's right. We talked to who about it. Ah, uh -huh, yes, okay. And I'll tell you more about it. Uh -huh. We talked to the yeah. Uh -huh. Sarsus getting good now. You talked to the expert, so. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, so, uh, so we had this formula, and it's, I'll try to explain why this formula is with things and other structural theorem about that intimates the possibility of some new mixed Hodge structures that are not mixed Hodge structures that should be somewhere they are not there but something like that may be there but I will tell you what is there so this formula is well, hardly accidental we want to understand its meaning uh, as it is, it's a bit of a mouthful. But how did we get it? Well, what we do is we first build P uh, from, from the combinatorics of P. From the combinatorics of P, we obtain a Stein covering of W that I erased. And we get a Stein covering of W. And then we compute the normal cohomology of W via check cohomology calculations. We're counting things already about P in that story. Uh, and this allows us to represent the Dolbo classes of W as explicit power series of certain open sets in CM plus 2. So we have this explicit power series. That's W. We still have not done the quotient by Z to the M. Uh, uh, one dimension zero. Uh, L in dimension 1 and 1 in dimension 2. 
then uh, we look for the Zn invariant terms. And that, this is why it's important that we're in the stable range, because we just want to look for the Zm invariant term with the Zm, this discrete abelian group. And we do that. And then we write M exact sequences describing the Zm action. And we then obtain the decomposition of the local homology. And now we count. And this is the formula we get. So it's an elaborate, explicit. But now you'll see why I like stabilizing in a second. So, this doesn't really quite contain the quasi coupled manifold because the quasi coupled manifold is a poly poly polygon that is one segment. So it's a bit degenerate. Uh, already the Calabric man is a square, and the pentagon is already a, a, a complicated manifold, if you remember. But, uh, but uh, the, the, uh, let me, the same method works for the Hof and quasi Hof, and the Hof is already stable. And this is very important, the Hof is already stable, and we get all the quasi Hof manifolds that are topologically H cross E cross E cross E cross E cross E cross E, but not by holomorphically H cross E cross E cross E cross E. And we get the Hof numbers. So let me write down the numbers, not go all the way down to actual numbers. Let me write down the Hodge diamonds. And this is the Hopf surface, of course. This is the Hopf surface, of course. Then I go and I write the Hodge diamond of the stabilized one was a Hopf. That I complete by these methods. And then I write, maybe I stabilize once more, and I write the Hodge numbers. Oh, now you can see that this does not look at all like the Hodge diamond of an algebraic variety. But they, they are Hodge diamonds, why not? Let me write one more. The, one, the fourth stabilization, because then we'll be able to play a game and see what's going on. So you have seen the collective works of Pascal. see a picture there, and then you say, well, why not? Let me get a little two by two diamond window and place it somewhere, here. Other two by two little window, any other, anywhere, here, three. So it's a beautiful thing which I have all these quasi coupled. Observe, I don't have maps, holomorphic maps, between these quasi coupled. I do not have maps between H1, H2, H3, and H4. But I have this Pascal's pyramid. In the traditional Pascal's triangle, if I add the two numbers on top, I get the one in the bottom. Now imagine this pyramid of numbers, and whenever you have these four numbers, you, this, this one's at the center, below this. And so you get this two-dimensional two -dimensional Pascal pyramid. But if you add two by two, you get the number at the bottom, below. This is the mean of this formula for the quasi-cough uh, 
the quasi cops, the quasi cop members. So you mean by induction, you, you have a relation of the uh, one is stabilized, and is that how you get it? Or? Yeah, what this says is if I add these four numbers, yeah, yeah. I, I get all the cosines from this one. And just like the Pascal triangle, I get one, if I get to one, one, I generate the whole Pascal triangle. If I just get the hop, the Hodge diamonds of the hop surface, just that one, I'll get all of them. This is what is happening. But of, of certain, these are, I don't even have maps between these complex methods. I don't even have maps within these complex numbers. Nevertheless, the Hodge numbers shh, behave, behave like this. And this is an incredibly beautiful recursion fault. If I write the Hodge numbers for any polygonal, uh, for all the stabilizations of the, all the polygonal LBM manifolds, including the color LBM manifolds, I will get this same recursion form. If I add the four, so I need, interestingly, interestingly, it's enough for me to have the first stable one to have all of them. If I have the first step, and there's a way to go back and have an unstable one, as I can explain. So it's enough to have the first step we want to have all of them. So the problem of computing the Hodge numbers of all these manifolds is equivalent to the problem of computing only the, the first stable one. Well, so but now we want to understand what's going on. What's going on? So let me tell you a little bit what's going on. So let me erase it. So, what you just multiply by the elliptic curve? Uh, you get a different manifold. Sorry? You get a different manifold with no, the same Hodge numbers. You have the same numbers in the particular place. No, he's asking how the Hodge numbers change if you get a direct problem. Well, uh, what, with this? Yes. Exactly by this recursion formula. Exactly by this recursion formula. Okay, let me tell you what's going on. So you're saying you came up with this recursion from the combinatorics. You noticed it and then, then you come up with some explanation. I guess that's the question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, and in the, exactly in the chronological order of our investigations, very much like Euler would have written down. Very much in the chronological order of what we were finding as we were walking around looking at these objects. Okay, so of course, uh, uh, we want to understand the meaning of this Pascal theorem. So what's the meaning of this Pascal theorem? And of course, we have to define the Hodge telling model. Here it's, uh, I'm now walking on very dangerous terrain because if the manifold is compact, everything that I will define is okay. But if it is not compact, we know that the whole game is when you, don't, you have complements of things and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so, but then, so the whole thing for the well, combinatorials tell you, uh, everybody tells you, that what you, what you should do is to take the generating function for your numbers rather than your numbers. So I'm going to take the generating function for, of, for my numbers rather than my numbers. And this, uh, this is uh, the function in polynomial for a K-inner manifold. And what I define for a complex, 
manifold if it is compact. I can define it for a complex manifold if it is compact. And now, uh, clearly, of course, I could, I could evaluate it in minus y and 1, and this would be the, the one that you know from here. So. Uh, and this will give you the generalized here's the German rock and so on and so forth. So you are familiar a little bit with this polynomial for the here's the German rock formula. Uh, so so let, let me do the quasi hop. Quasi hop HPQ. Uh, let me just write this simpler formula. If I write this formula, I can add myself what is the polynomial for the n plus a half manifold. n plus a half manifold. These are the such numbers that I was writing down in this uh, Pascal pair. So where is the polynomial? And one can prove uh, using typical theory of generating functions for combinatorial expressions that this is. And now, this explains quotation, quotation. This quotation, quotation explains the recursion formula. Uh, because now, as you pointed out, all I'm doing is multiplying by times 1 plus u, times 1 plus b at every step of stabilization. But the formula already contains that information. Sorry. The formula exactly contains that information. If I divide the m by the m minus 1, I get 1 plus u, 1 plus v. Exactly. So this is the, fo the formula, the recursion formula happens because this is a polynomial. But we want to understand a little bit better what's going on. So let me, let me, uh, well, let me say what I just said. So this is the recursion form. The, the Pascal theorem is written in terms of the generating functions for the. Uh, but, but now I can start playing some game, and at this point it's very important that I remember that the hop surface is the logarithmic transform of a of a, a product elliptic vibration. So now I remember, ah, yeah, the hop surface is a log transform. So once I remember that. I can write the following. I can write, well, this is proposition, perhaps. And I write. I need space for this one. Sorry. What I'm going to do is I am going to try to uh, write this, remembering that this is a log transform. Log transform 
firm that is localized at the place where I did the log transform. Uh, and let me run some more nonsense. k0 bar y and see how it goes that, that gets increasingly complicated as you try to show consistency and so on and so forth uh, so uh, uh, well observe that the properties of the Hochstein that I wrote in this, this Pascal structure is exactly equivalent to these equalities uh, but we know K0 complex manifolds is not good. Uh, K0 complex manifolds is too small. It doesn't have information. And K0 bar is too... I mean, a ring is too simple ring. K0 bar doesn't really contain Y. The long transform term. So, do I put it by hand? What do I do? What was it? But think that this is in some hypothetical K0 something, and then we are looking for something. This is what we're doing. We are looking for something. OK. So just bear that in mind. Uh, remembering that H uh, is log transform. P1 cross Pl. Because they are not biholomorphic. So that is, remember, this is not zero. And in fact, this polynomial is not zero. This polynomial is x times 1 plus y squared or something like that. So that polynomial is not zero. That polynomial is detecting. This hypothetical k0 something is detecting the log transform. So it's, we're detecting the log transform with this calculation. Okay, well that gets interesting. Let me write another, no, let me call this a little more complicated. And let me write another one. I'm going to take a Calabi Edman that is S3 cross S3 cross S1 cross S1 to the M minus 1. And I need the stable range. I need M to be at least 2. I need M to be at least 2. I can recover the, the initial calorie but wait for that, because that gets a little bit even more weird. Even more weird. I'm already weird. I'm going to weird out a little bit more. with this, 
I'm going to try to do the Taylor expansion around an elliptic curve. In this universe that I don't know what universe it is. So let me do the, the Taylor function on the elliptic curve for the Poisson Canadian. So e equals two, and this gets a lot of fun. The first equality is simply two. And this is a symbol. This is a polynomial A U B that I what, what, U times one plus B squared. This is just a symbol. Uh, or I call it the log transform polynomial, the basic log transform L1. I call it in fact L1 in B. So I call it that. Should be kind of a more complicated transform. And in it, we can prove that all the polygonal LVM manifolds, and we conjecture that all the LVM manifolds, are generalized log transforms. And, but here we can tell how to write the formula for this new double log transform. And this I call the second logarithmic transform term. And it's a polynomial, I can write it. Uh, and the difference of squares polynomial. And by the way, now I can cancel track. Track. And I only get And that's why you end bigger than what to do, this formula. It doesn't make any sense if it's not bigger than what to I observe that I'm getting a whole bunch of the, like the only offending character is age over and over again. The only offending character is age. So, and now we ask who? What do you see? What do you see here? And he gave us a, 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 a fascinating remark. That is the following. He pointed out the following theorem. Let me write the theorem. But, uh, but it's okay. Over there. Sounds good. So this is this is true. This is true. Everything that makes sense is true, and these things you can just erase, and everything else is checkable. Uh, uh, and, and the other one, well, I'll just so so this this who knows 
behaves so much like the ring of all Hodge polynomials in positive characteristic. So, uh, remember where are the complex numbers? Uh, it can be manifold over the complex numbers. All Hodge polynomials are generated by that of P1, that of P2, and that of an elliptic curve. But in the positive characteristic, we have the following curve. And this fits very well with this theorem that I just erased. So this is, for the general case, it's cut chic. And it's right there. And for the positive characteristics, it's fan double. I'm gluing. And the theorem says Hodge polynomials. Well, said is really nothing. Forget about said. Uh, some time do I have? Sorry? 22 minutes. Um, That's the way to write So our universe, whatever hypothetical universe we are working on, doesn't look like the complex scalar world. It looks like the positive characteristic world. Ah, this is extremely intriguing. You see, for this non scalar comp but complex manifolds, we are in this position, in the positive characteristic situation. We are not in the scalar situation. And S is playing this thing that in the positive characteristic appears by a construction, blah, 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 is a hot minute in the non killer world that behaves just like the positive characteristic world. Okay, so what's going on? Well, uh, we finally, I'll give you the answer to all this funny business. Uh, this is happening. This is not happening in case of bar. No, it's happening here. And this is not happening in case of complex manifolds. This is happening. The, our theorem says that our expressions make sense. In case you only the final universe. That's the universe for this category. All my manifolds are definable in a remember all and over we observe that we're only using the exponential function. All and over I pointed out throughout the development we're only using the exponential function. Because we're only using the exponential function, there is this one all minimal structure that is amenable to these constructions. Uh, and well this this ring is there, there is zero this. And in this universe our formulas are true. Uh, so this is the answer to the puzzle. But 
then we have more, and we have a, a beautiful theorem. But then the, the, the Davis theorem is a bit surprising, and I will try to explain why it is a bit surprising. This is a low minimal structure, right? You make some choice and... and How much of that? Yeah. X, and? And X, yeah, yeah. There. There. You have to start with something kind of uh, to generate the whole minimal structure, right? And this. Uh, yeah, we're using this, uh, you know, uh, the names, again, you know, the names are I'm very bad at the names, you know, Peter Seel and Star in complex analysis in that world of those complex manifolds, these these formulas are true. So it's not as complex manifolds, but this universe of these all minimal definable manifolds has a whole bunch of non-scalar manifolds that are complex. All the LBM manifolds, in particular, live in this universe, and then you they live in K zero this uh, in K zero this and. The, and of course, we, this is a, I raise one of our theorems, and we have two theorems. This is one of our theorems. In the open minimal, it looks, when we put here the whole surface, the, the Hodge polynomials look like the positive characteristic, not like the Kähler case. Look like the positive characteristic. Super weird. It looks like the positive characteristic, not like the Kähler case. That's theorem one. Theorem two. Well, I'm going to raise theorem one. <coughs> theorem two. Theorem 2 is uh, even more interesting. It is, uh, you see, traditionally you have this motivic measure that goes from K0 bar to K0 Hodge structures. Uh, but now we don't have a Hodge structures. So, nevertheless, so you, uh, traditionally you have K0 bar. K0 Hodge structures, and then you went to Z UB or whatever. And then you went to Z UB. Well, we believe there is something here, and we have some sort of candidate for this, but we haven't proved that this animal is here. We don't know this animal. But we can prove this. So, theorem K0 definable to Z UB. Is a Hodge characteristic. Is a homomorphism of, of rings. And now this is very surprising because to prove these in the classical case, you use mixed Hodge structures. And now you don't have mixed Hodge structures. So you have to do something rather than nothing. But it's not that. You, know, you have to do something rather different to prove. This poor, very, this poor man's version of this. You don't have a, a case of Hodge structures, but you still have this one. And you can prove that this is a homomorphism, but now you have to design an entirely different proof. And this, uh, this is, uh, goes around the lines of a very general kind of phenomenon that is occurring in geometry. That is that there is this statement here, this statement here. For example, our proof will prove that there is homomorphism. But it won't prove that there is homomorphism in the classical case. So you would say, well, why would you want to prove that there is homomorphism? And not prove that there is homomorphism in the classical case. But a super complicated proof. Well, because that super complicated proof generalizes to the definable universe. And it gives you something rather than nothing. It gives you something. So, uh, and the general phenomenon in geometry is that there is this statements in classical geometry that you just weaken them a little bit, that are have kind of two groups. One with let me call it logic, this kind of tools, 
uh, and the other one is classical, let me call it homological. Let me call it homological. This proof is highly non-homological always. In, in this universe, you lost homology. So you really do something very different, but you prove it. Uh, but of course, now the, now the statement holds for many more objects. Uh, so you lose something because it's vastly more, more general. Uh, so you find the objects that it applies to. Well, of course, it's not as strong a statement as it used to be. But, but, so the, but also you also think, am I not seeing the right generalization of this object? We don't know. We don't know if this thing really is not at all there in the definable world. We know it's not there in the just complex manifolds. That's a crazy thing. Uh, it won't have a structure. I mean, you can't. There, you won't find anything. Even K0 complex manifolds will be too small. Uh, but in the definable world, there could be something, some new Hodge theory that we haven't seen. Uh, and this is evidence that there could be something like that. Uh, so how much time do I have? Sorry about that. Twelve minutes. Twelve minutes. Okay. So let me say a few things about this definable world, and maybe how you go about putting it in this definable world, even though you lost mixed causal structures and all these classical tools. So let me try to say something like that in these 12 minutes. So, do you, do you have an explanation for this uh, characteristic P? Uh, from this logic? Uh, I have heuristics. I don't have a solid explanation. There is several standard heuristics in, in this sort of thing that tell you that uh, why not uh, maybe let me think a little bit I could even say more about that but not right now yeah. Uh, but yeah I don't think we have a good explanation yet and maybe people in logic have a better understanding uh, Anyway, uh, so, uh, so, what do I do? I don't know what. I, uh, I remind you what is a non minimal structure, perhaps, or that's wasting time. Well, let me remind you in the half of the time about the non minimal structures and what you do to just get a, a flavor of what this world is like. And half of the time, sort of the idea of the proof. Uh, uh, so, First, the minimal structures. Uh, uh, so, a structure R on R is a, a sequence uh, of sets in every dimension. So, this the final sets in every dimension. So that Rn is a Boolean algebra of subsets of Rn. So if you have the final one, the final one, the final one gives you the final one. That kind of thing. Uh, A in Rn implies this operation is allowed. And R per se in R and plus one. So you, those two are there. Then uh, the diagonals are in R n. The diagonals are in R n. And 
This is a lazy way of trying to not use the logic, to talk about the logic. A in R n plus 1, then this is This is about the quantifier that exists, of course. Uh, and P of A is in part N. Uh, this element eliminated the quantifier exists. And the R is only minimal if 5 and 6. Singletons are in R1. Intervals are in R1. Uh, no, 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 no. So, sorry. X less than Y are in R2. Uh, and then finally six. R1 is open intervals and points. And points. So this is an uh, all minimal structure R. Uh, and a set is definable. So what's the game? Uh, the name of the game is really if you think about it, it goes back to Brouwer. And this, this simple, they were very worried about doing mathematics and, and certain actions. And so the, a, a little bit the desire of this theory, uh, that also is realizing ideas of Grothendieck and many other people, is to have this kind of Lego-like geometry where everything, you, you construct, everything is constructed in principle. Of course, the algorithms rapidly become non-polynomial. Almost every construction becomes uh, non-polynomial. Uh, non uh -oh. Wake up, it's the morning. Uh, it's my Mexican alarm. <laughs> uh, uh, everything becomes it's about making everything constructible, really, not, not, uh, not uh, so the, and then you get, once you do the complex analysis compatible with this own minimal structure, then you will have, or even just metaphors, you will, you will have these kind of preferred cells, they have these cells, and you can only construct things with these particular cells in these particular controlled gluings, and so on and so forth. So things are very, well, they use the word tame, uh, nevertheless, semi algebraic geometry com lives completely inside this universe, totally tame from this point of view. And, uh, and even uh, intuitively, one of the moments of the theory was when they realized that you could add exponential function and still have something that it extremely controls. Uh, you cannot just add it. For just crazy functions at will. In fact, it's, all, it's a small miracle that once you do the definitions and you do this kind of thing, you can add the exponential function and still have a completely controlled theory. So, uh, well, that's more or less the, the gist. But, the, but then the elements become very, very different. Uh, yeah, a lot of things, uh, an example is Charles' theorem. Typical proof of Charles' theorem is uh, uses uh, the homology, some sort of homology. At some point, there's a homological and a vanishing theorem or something. Uh, and now there is another proof, entirely different proof of Charles' theorem, that is entirely different. It's about the fact that the thing is controlled, and that control things, volumes don't grow too bad, and that you have Bishop's theorem, and so, it's a completely different proof now. It's uh, no homology ever appears on this. It's very geometric. So it, it's very funny. In many ways, it's going back 
to geometry without homology. And this sounds very disturbing. Uh, you know, yeah, now it's instinctual for us to use homological methods. But uh, you can do a lot without them. And, and, and even inform some of the homological methods by these other stories. So that's that. So uh, I have 10 minutes. Let me say a little bit about the proof of the statement. Uh, let me say a little, little bit about the proof of the statement. And then, uh, how do we bypass the classical proof? Uh, our, so let me say three things about the proof of our theorem, and then finish there. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, but now, of course, we have no minimum framework. The final framework. So we don't have such structures or anything like that. But if we want to produce a weaker version, that we have this Hodge characteristic as a polynomial, not K0 Hodge structures, uh, then we can use two results. Uh, one the proposition that it's obvious, and then the following theorem that it's not. This is a theorem by Peter. So she proved a very important result for us. K0 bar. Uh, uh, so K0 bar is generated by classes of a smooth projective varieties subject to the obvious relation. That kind of thing. So, uh, from Bittner's theorem, you can reduce the proof that this is a character. The polynomial is a characteristic to the to uh, thinking about. Uh, sorry, about that. Uh, to thinking about uh, uh, just smooth projective varieties. Uh, and uh, for this you can use a lemma that tells you as well and this is a blow up then you have an uh, exact sequence of function structures But now you don't need these Hodge structures or anything like that. Everything here is just Hodge structures. And you could even do it just with polynomials. You could write the corresponding polynomial statement. And so you could write just a minimalistic proof that just uses the polynomial version and Wittner zero to prove that it is a characteristic. But of course now you push the can to prove in Wittner zero. And what we claim is that we have a Wittner theorem in the definable unit. And that we can use that to prove then that it is a, uh, that the Hodge polynomial is a Hodge characteristic without ever using mixed Hodge structures. And that's all. Thank you very much. Here has, I mean, you could rewrite the proof. I imagine explicitly writing covers and things like that without using all this language. But now uh, this language is becoming more and more uh, common, so I, I don't think it's a problem to, to use this language. But you could write a very geometric proof, just that, that for this, for many folks that are just written like this, you have a Hodge characteristic. Not for all complex variables, this is true. We have complex samples in the paper. Uh, this is easy. Uh, but, but this is more than 
than just algebraic varieties. And this explains all these uh, structuring the large numbers of LBM models. And Ludwig would have a lot to say about phantoms and other things that I don't know, but <laughs> that I will not say today. Thank you, Mr. Gaines.